You know, I'm not going to lie to you. I had jokes for the beginning. It's like, oh, it's a movie called The Northman, played by the guy who played Eric Northman in True Blood. True Blood tie-in jokes. <laughs> After watching this movie, all I can say here is, holy fuck. Had to edit that out. YouTube does not like F-bombs dropped in the first minute. It'll get you demonetized the way it is. Also, thank you for clicking on my face. I love you for that. <laughs> Last video, someone in the comment section was like, he didn't thank me for clicking on his face. Oh, but I do appreciate you for clicking on my face. We're coming up on me doing this for 13 years now. 13 years this summer, you're still clicking on my face. I cannot illustrate how much I appreciate that and appreciate you for that, so thank you. On to The Northman. The Northman is a Robert Eggers directed revenge epic set in the year 900 something Viking territory, you know, Norse times. It stars Alexander Skarsgård, who's on this war path, this revenge path against his uncle who killed his king father. It's basically Lion King, but you know, Norse times, Norse mythology. Which I hear this movie is based off of the legend that inspired Hamlet, which inspired Lion King, so you know, it's all connected. Wait, this is the one minute mark for this video, so I gotta say, holy fuck this movie! Had to be said, because it had to be said. But we got revenge, blood, brutality, betrayal of family. All the things we love to see in cinema keep us warm at night. And I gotta say, man, this movie was epic. <laughs> I, I was just enthralled, I was surprised at how much I loved being in this world. There were things I didn't expect in this movie. I expected, you know, like the Viking guy on his revenge quest. I didn't expect as much mysticism in the movie as I got. There's actually a lot of mysticism, magic, mythology, all in the spectrum of Norse mythology, of course. Now, everyone in this movie is great, though they're not the most relatable crew, but they're not supposed to be. So one of the things I liked about this movie is this movie builds a world of 900 AD Viking territory, Viking times. This movie doesn't build a world that speaks to our egocentric sense of 2022 civility. No, it speaks to the audience on a much deeper visceral sense of primal rage. That is to say, the film is brutal, not just in violence, but when violence does go down, it is brutal. But it's the overall sense of the world. That's the brutal part. That's the part I appreciate. It's a world where if you look at it through our modern day goggles, there are no good guys. But to the times they come from, they are good guys. And as much as I have no doubt, even the brutality of this world and the characters in it, heroes, villains alike, are the nerfed or otherwise prettied up more palatable versions of them. I appreciate the effort that went into accurately depicting the brutality of the times and the people in it. And now I'm in my head going, what is brutality? What is civility? I'm sure in the year 3100, some gritty filmmaker is gonna make a movie that takes place in 2022. I'm sure the people in that time will be like, did you see the people of 2022 in that new movie? <sighs> Savagery. Thus is the ever-flowing river of the zeitgeist. Now this is a film where the world is the enthralling, captivating element of it, more than the characters are. I mean, you're totally down for Alexander Skarsgård and his revenge quest, but he is, I mean, dude's a brute. Dude is a big hulking brute of a human, someone who was forged in the fires of war and bloodshed, comforted by dreams of revenge for years, I mean, just who he is. He's not a relatably warm and fuzzy human being, but it's kind of what makes the film awesome, and it is in line with the fact that it's like, no, the movie doesn't pretty itself up. How weird would that be? It's like this super brutal world, and Alexander Skarsgård's a, he plays a poet out for revenge. No, his poetry is his sword, his ink is blood. This did have a bit of a Count of Monte Cristo element in there too. It had some of the flavor of Monte Cristo. I'm not talking the movie, the movie's a great swashbuckling adventure, and I love it, but I'm talking about the book. The book is a, much darker revenge tale. Where it's like, I don't want to just kill these people. I want to fuck with them and really wreck their world. That's in here and, and I enjoy seeing that. I would hope if I was on a revenge quest, I would have the patience to do that. I've been talking about the world, but what can I say? The world was very enthralling to me, but everyone in the movie did a great job. Anya Taylor-Joy once again is perfection. Also, you see people in this movie that have been in other Robert Eggers films. It, it took me, it took me much longer than I want to admit to be like, who? Oh my God, that's Willem Dafoe. But you got Nicole Kidman in the film too. It just, it kind of shows that Robert Eggers is becoming one of those directors. Like Nolan or Scorsese where actors are like, oh, Robert Eggers is making another movie. I, I really want to be a part of it, please. Another thing that makes me love this world is how beautifully shot it is. Even when dealing with death, not just human death, like there's this, the place that they're in is just kind of a wasteland. There's some greenery there. I wouldn't want to live there. But the landscapes, the volcano, it all just looked gorgeous. And that translates to the fights too. Now when I talk about the fights, the battles, don't expect this movie just to be like battle after battle. Yeah, it's just, 
<laughs> it's not an action movie, but that meticulous kind of craftsmanship you see in every other facet of this film does translate to the fights. So when fighting's happening, there are very few cuts. It doesn't seem so jarring like you see in a lot of movies these days. It's like directors are like, no one knows how to fight. Let's just hide it with edits. That doesn't happen in here. There are long stretches. It's just like, there are no cuts happening. It's just sword on sword, steel on steel, bone on bone. And the fighting is so sparingly done that when it happens, it is special. One fight, one conflict in particular, I can only describe it as, it's like if Anakin and Obi-Wan, if that fight was a lot shorter, but a lot more visceral, a lot more real, a lot more testosterone, and it was translated from a Souls game. It's what it felt like. I've heard that there's a lot of downtime in the film. I never felt it. I never felt the downtime. It never bored me because the downtime was still plotting, scheming. It was all in the vein and spectrum of revenge. So for me, the, the film is always moving forward at a very healthy pace. In the end, The Northman, it worked for me on I can't think of a thing in this movie that I would change. This movie's not gonna be for everybody, absolutely, 150%. There are people who would be like, oh, it dragged on in parts, I, I get it. But there are people out there who don't like JRPGs, like old school SNES JRPGs, but if they got their hooks into you, you live for them. That's what this movie's like. It's like an old school JRPG. It's like you either love it or it's not your thing. But if you love it, you're in for an experience. That's what this movie is. I, I would say it's one of my favorite movies of the year, but it's, really one of my favorite experiences of the year. And I have no question in my mind, The Northman is awesome-tacular. <laughs> That'll be in your head too. I will avenge your father. I will save your mother. I will kill you, Fjolnir. That'll be your lullaby the night after you watch this film. All right, so The Northman, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Or what's your favorite revenge tale? Doesn't have to be a movie, it could be a book, but what is it? I love a good revenge tale. So whatever it is, whatever you think, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you wanna see more, click right here to see more. <laughs>